my name is Ashley, and we are so excited that you are tuning in to Church Online with us. If this is your first time watching with us, or if you've said yes to Jesus, or are looking to take a next step, like joining a growth group or getting baptized, we would love to invite you to fill out a Connect card. To do that, all you need to do is text the word CONNECT to 951-476-2550. One of our staff members would love to connect with you this next week and answer any questions that you have. Before we get into this week's message, I wanted to let you guys know about a couple of things coming up here at South Hills that we're really excited about. The first thing we've got coming up is happening on August 12th, which is a Wednesday, and that is the relaunch of our student ministry, SHS. We are so excited to relaunch this. And if you have a student who's in seventh grade or beyond, we would love to invite them to come hang out with us. Seventh and eighth grade is gonna be happening from 6.30 until 7.30, all online and virtual. Ninth grade and above is gonna be meeting from 7.30 until 8.30, all happening virtually. To find out more information, including the links for the Zoom groups, all you need to do is go to the Groups tab on the Church Center app, where you'll find all that information, and including the Zoom links so that your students can get connected. We would love to get to meet them and get them plugged in with awesome new friends and awesome adults who are super excited to meet them, know them, and invest in their lives. The next thing we're super excited about is a blood drive that we are hosting here on Sunday, August 16th from 3.30 to 8.30 p.m. Right now, blood banks and hospitals across our state are super in need of donors, and we wanna be able to meet that need in a tangible way. You can snag your spot by going to the Church Center app, clicking on the Events tab, and signing up for your spot. Another thing we are super excited about is baptisms, and those are gonna be coming up on Sunday the 16th. It's gonna be from 1 to 3 p.m., and baptisms will look a little different as we're in this season, but you can head to the Church Center app, go to the Events tab, and sign up there for more information. Lastly, also happening on Sunday the 16th, we are hosting a growth group leader information meeting. It is gonna be a super awesome opportunity for you to kind of find out what it looks like to be a growth group leader. It's not a commitment, it's just an interest meeting. So if you've had it on your heart to maybe lead a group, or maybe you haven't, now you're kind of a little interested, we would love to get to see you at either 10.15 after our morning service or at 8.15 after our evening service. It'll be a quick informational meeting Meeting, and we'd love to see you guys out. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and enjoy the service. I give you glory through all you brought me through and now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. I'm moving forward, I'm moving forward to follow Now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. Oh, your presence is an open door. We want you, Lord, like never before. Oh, your presence is an open so come now, Lord, like never before. Come on. In every season, your grace has been in us. And I'm believing the best is yet to come. I'm on the cross, the cross before me, my hope on things ever, and in you, Jesus, the best is yet to come. Your presence is an open door. We want you, Lord. Like never before, oh, your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, like never before. Thank you, Lord. 
Come on, we sing this together. I know breakthrough is coming. By faith, I see a miracle. My God made me a promise and it won't stop now. No, I sing it out. I know breakthrough is coming. By faith, I see a miracle. My God made me a promise and it won't stop now. Oh, I know. I know breakthrough is coming. By faith, I see a miracle. My God made me a promise and it won't stop now. Oh, I know breakthrough is coming. By faith, I see a miracle. My God made me a promise and it won't stop now. Oh. Hey, South Hills, it's Adam, the campus pastor here at the Corona campus. And I'm actually away on vacation this week with my family. It's the middle of summer, and obviously we're in the middle of a huge pandemic. But I wanna really make sure that my kids still have a great summer. And so I've taken a few days off with my family just to get away. But in my place, we've got a great special guest speaker. But before I get into that, I want to invite you to do something with us this morning, and that is I wanna invite you to give. And as you're gathering your giving together, whether that's your church center app and finding the Corona campus to give, whether that is you are pulling out your checkbook and writing a check and, and preparing to mail it to us, logging on the website, or you leveraging the text to give function, I wanna just tell you about something that your giving did this past week and something that I want to invite you to leverage it to do this next week. Last week, I was telling you about Olive Crest, which is this organization that we've been working with that works specifically with kids who don't have uh, a great living situation. And we sent a team to pack backpacks full of school supplies that were donated for them this last week. And I invited you last Sunday to give a little bit extra to Beyond Our Walls so that we could build these big extravagant gift baskets and deliver them to not just the kids, but to the workers that invest their time there. I'm telling you guys, they were absolutely blown away. You stepped up and gave, and we took those resources and bought gift cards and snacks and food and just little things that we knew that they wanted and needed to make their lives and jobs much easier. We got to be the ones to step in and say, we see you, we're thankful for what you do. We think you're a hero in our community and we want you to know that there's a, a spiritual community that's thinking about you, praying for you, and is willing to practically do things to serve your needs. And you did that this past week with your giving by just all of us committing to give in addition to our typical tithes, another $10 to be on our walls. And so I've got another challenge for you this weekend. Uh, we've done a couple food distribution events here in the past few months. There are a lot of people who are out of work who have no idea where their next meal is coming from. And we have stepped up as a community to be able to purchase truckloads of food and distribute them in our different communities. We did a distribution event in San Diego. We did one here in Corona in Costa Mesa. And this next one coming up here in the next couple weeks is in Burbank. And yet it takes all of us on all of our campuses to lean in, to give and invest in order to make it happen. It's several thousand dollars to pull something like this together. And so here's what I wanna invite you to do. If you give $10 today uh, to Beyond Our Walls, 
that feeds a family for about two to three days. Some of you can give $10, some 100, some 1,000. Give whatever you can today, but stretch yourself a little bit. So as you're doing that, I want to introduce to you today our guest speaker who's gonna be filling in for me while I'm on vacation. And it's somebody that you actually already know. It is our family pastor here at South Hills Corona. His name is Nate Cummings, and he came to be with us in January. He has a huge heart for family, for community, for people finding real relationships, and that's a big part of what he's here to do as a staff member. So would you do me a favor and give him all of the attention and lean in for this next part of This Is Us. Every family has a way of doing things. A way they handle the big stuff and the small stuff. A way of thinking, doing, gathering, serving, being. A way that even from the outside walls they sometimes call home tells you who they are and what they stand for. We are South Hills. We are family. This, this is, is us. us. Hey, welcome. Uh, my name is Nate, and I'm the family pastor here at South Hills Corona. And thank you so much for tuning in online or wherever you're watching this. We are in week five of our This Is Us series. The last several weeks, Pastor Adam has been unpacking several of these values, these statements that we kind of, as a church family, hold up as this is what we want to strive to be and do as a family. Um, we really do see ourselves as a family, and we want to put some specific words to what that looks like. And so today I have uh, the honor, the privilege of sharing two of these values with you. And I titled this message, Sandcastles, Strongholds, and Safe Places. And why I did that is uh, one thing that I wanted to share with you guys that we love to do as our family. I'm married to my beautiful wife, Marissa, and we have a seven-year-old boy, and we love to go to the beaches. We love to go explore the sandy beaches of Southern California and the rocky beaches of Northern California. Like any and all of those different kinds of beaches, we love to go and explore and enjoy. And my favorite activity at the beach is to actually build a sandcastle. It's not so much like playing in the water, but it's actually building the sandcastles. And I love like the different things that I get to see others trying to do too. Like one day I remember seeing like these boys, like they were building up this like moat kind of a thing. Um, and they were like hurriedly trying to like build it up because the tide was coming in. <laughs> and then, like they, they were like oh, scrounging around trying to like build it up like, like put some rocks in here and this or that and like because they had this pretty neat little sandcastle but of course like the tide keeps coming in I remember one time like we were on this trip and I got to actually spend like a whole huge day building a sandcastle and I decided to, to build a sphinx like this like lion like this lion thing and it was like it wasn't just this small little thing like it was this massive sandcastle thing and i had a blast just creating it and carving it like he had the whole lion like body and the 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 hands that came out and the whole head and it was just it was so much fun but inevitably like the tide does come like every time like you start maybe sometime after breakfast and you get going and then you know that late afternoon and then this, the tide starts coming in now like thankfully like I built a moat you know like right around I, I built the moat to like pr try to protect my creation because it was so cool like I wanted I wanted it to stay I wanted like because it was going to be so good and beautiful I wanted other people to see it and so I, I built that moat and and but like at some point though the tide gets high enough that like no no matter of like things that I would try to do around my creation it doesn't matter like it keeps on coming in but isn't that life? Like, isn't that like what we do in life often? Like we're building up these beautiful things where we, we have these ideas of what we want our life to be. And so we start going to town building it. We start kind of crafting it out of sand and into these, you know, like my, I want my marriage to look this certain way or my job, my career, or my kids. Like I start to build into these things of life and it's like, okay, that's great. But inevitably there's some sort of wind or tide or waves or rain that crash around, uh, around it and uh, like it starts to erode at that like sandcastle. Because oftentimes like life feels like that. Like it's not this solid like forever kind of a thing, like the things of our own life that we experience like COVID happens and like life goes, 
bananas and it's like a big wave just crashed through and we're like oh no okay I got to rebuild that or like how do I even rebuild that because it's like what was there wasn't there in the same way and what do I do and like that though I think is a, a metaphor for me when I was thinking about what I wanted to share with you or what I believe God wanted to share with us today this idea of sandcastles and building up sandcastles and the the building up but also the tearing down that like contrast like is life isn't it like the things that we want to see have happen in life. Like we, we hope and we strive to have a better life that what's happening right now is only just a glimpse of maybe what is better to come. And, and we have hope, or maybe if you don't have hope, you wish you could have hope because like you want things to be better because of what the circumstances in life right now, and maybe you've got that beautiful sandcastle or maybe you don't and the waves have completely washed it away and you're looking at like this glump, like a, a lump of sand there and you're like, what just happened? We want to figure out how to grow, how to be better. You know, but in this church, we want to do that too. And like, maybe it goes without saying like that we would have this value statement of, you know, we want to be healthy and healthy things grow. I mean, is, isn't that kind of like assumed? Like, why would we not want that, right? Like, we want to grow, we want to be healthy, right? Like, why does it even have to be stated? Uh, well, I think there might be like a few different reasons of why, like, have you ever like, maybe you have a kid, and I know for me, like Levi, I ask him to do things and he's like, no, no I know. I, I know, I know what I know what you mean. Like we're like, okay, go pick up your cl your clothes and your living room. Like go go pick up. Like I, I know, I know, I got it, Dad. I got it. Okay, but but show me. Like like you you got to actually like do the thing. Like you can't just say you know it or say like I okay I learned it. Like you actually have to do the thing that you know is right to do. Well, like I think that there's something about like knowing something, knowing that it's a truth, knowing it's like good and something you should strive for, and the reality that actually ends up being life. How do we actually make this happen? And I think we have to put certain things in place to make it happen. Things in life are either growing or they're dying, and we have to be intentional about how are we growing and how are we building into what is going to become this better future. And so here at South Hills, like we've, we've tried to like do that, that, just to like maybe a glimpse behind the curtain a little bit. We actually have this document that we created for us as a staff of some health, like some th questions that we ask ourselves on like a periodic basis of like, what does it mean to be healthy? And there's some different categories and I wanted to put them in front of you as things to think about. You know, like how are you healthy like or unhealthy in these categories physically, relationally, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually? Ask yourself, how am I doing in each one of these categories physically? Do you feel good? Do you feel healthy? Do you feel like you've grown in that? Are you exercising enough? Are you getting enough time of rest and sleep? Like physically, like where are you at? And pause at each one of these and spend some time to actually think about it. How would you want each of these things to be? How would you want your relationships with your spouse, with your kids, with friends or family? How would you want those to, would there be some characteristics that you'd want them to be more like or less like? And we need to put some like, things in place to help ourselves track this because we do have this value of wanting to be healthy and we recognize healthy things grow. If you look at any plants, at the things of the rainforest, like it's amazing like the growth that ends up happening in these, in these places. Like you look at the plants around the campus here, there's some that are green and growing great and there's others that are dying. <laughs> um, and like if you don't know anything about like plants, like once it's dead, like it doesn't come back. You've got to, in order for the rest of the plant to come alive, if you've got one branch that kind of is like, oh, that's dead, it's not ever gonna come back alive. You've got to cut it out so that the rest of the plant can grow healthy in a healthy way. And so we have to like recognize, okay, here's, here's the overall plant of life, of what we're growing and becoming. And so here's the things that I wanna grow in, but also here's the things that maybe I need to cut out of my life, but we have to know it and go after it to make sure that it ends up happening. I saw this study um, that was actually really interesting. Um, uh, it's the American Society of Training and Development. And it, it talked about like, if we have these goals of trying to become a better self, trying to do the things in life that we want to see happen and set some goals, it was talking about the likelihood that we would actually complete those. If you have an idea, a goal, you actually have the, the in your mind like, okay, I want to lose 10 pounds. And you have that idea in your mind. Like you are 10% more likely to actually complete that than if you don't even have the idea at all. If you make a conscious decision that you're going to do it, you're 25% more likely to actually do the thing. 
Now, if you decide when you're gonna do it, it rises to 40%. If you decide and you plan out how you're actually going to do that, you're gonna raise that likelihood that you're gonna succeed but to 50%. But here's the thing about this, is like if you really want to grow and be healthy, there's actually something else that you can do. It's, it's committing to someone that, that, uh, that you will do it. If you say it out loud to somebody else around you, you're 65% more likely then to actually then do it. Now this was a study where they like looked at a bunch of different factors and people of like all these goals that they have set for themselves and, the, and like actually tracked them to then to like see like did they actually do it and they like basically came down with like this is a general idea of how things end up happening is that if you do these things you're then more likely to actually see it happen. But get this, you are, if you want to raise that up to a 95 percentile, this is what you want to do. You need to have a specific accountability appointment with someone you've committed to. And if you make that step in any category in your life, you are then 95% likely to actually complete the thing that you're trying to do. And for me, like when I think about this, I'm like, my own life is an example of this. When I've brought other people into my life in a good way, like, and I've, I've met with them consistently, and I, I, I say, I give them permission. Basically, hey, can you hold me accountable? Like, I'm trying to lose weight, I'm trying to do this in this time frame, can you help me? And then I have regular conversations with that person, like, and I end up like being able to actually do it. I'm, I'm able to hold to it and succeed in that thing. But I think that there's something deeper here for us if we choose to follow Jesus. If, we choose, if we're a part of the church, if we're a part of a consistent body, a local church, I think there's actually something to this. Because you could take this and go, okay, that's great. That's a good truth, a good something to learn from. But I think that there's something deeper that if we to apply scripture, we apply faith to this, we can actually see something even more transformative and even more powerful. There was this quote that I love from Reggie Joyner. He's a guy that leads and directs a lot of the strategy and curriculum that we do for kids and students. The truth of your message is amplified by the depth of your relationship. You see, like, we might hear some good and imp important things in life. We might have, like, some, some quote that we hear. We hear a, a, a pastor preach a sermon, or we hear some good thing in a book, and we're like, oh, that was really good. That's a good truth. I need to learn that. But if you couch that in a relationship, it amplifies the impact of that truth in your life. Because I, I could watch a cool like video on YouTube or Facebook. I, I could do something like that. I mean, maybe you're watching this and, and, and you're, you see me teaching something and, and you, you hear a truth that's like, oh, that was really good. But as soon as you include that into a relationship, in having a conversation with somebody else around that truth, and you start to meet and talk about, okay, wait, how does that play into my life? And you open up a dialogue out loud with somebody else, or that truth is spoken to you from a mentor, somebody that you have a relationship with, somebody that's invested in your life, that truth then takes on something far better and different in your life that will transform you and be amplified in your life in a really good way. So you see, who you become is less about who, what you know than who you're with. We can learn a lot of things about life, a lot of things about how to become better physically or mentally or emotionally. We could read books, we can listen to sermons, we can do, do all sorts of different things to learn knowledge about all of these factors in life. But so much of the power and the transforming nature of how we actually become healthy and how we grow has way more to do with who you surround yourself with than just actually knowing it. The truth of the message is amplified by the depth of your relationship. You see, we believe here at South Hills, we believe in the involvement in a healthy local church will make your life better and make you better at life by uniquely connecting you to wisdom, camaraderie, and purpose. And we believe that your involvement in a local church is the best place to have that happen. You see, some of these things that I'm talking about do show up in culture outside of the church a mom's group that meets for, for coffee every once in a while, and they talk and they, 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 you know, they, they laugh and they, or they, they, they confide in each other about how horrible their kids are or their husbands. Or like, like there's, there's, there's connection points with other people in our life. Like, there's things that, that show up maybe like in a, in a guy's group that hang out and watch sports and um, you, know, you en enjoy the, the camaraderie. There are things in culture and life where this shows up, this idea of 
Relationships with each other amplifies life and amplifies the things in life. But we believe that there's something that happens when you connect it to a local healthy church. There's something different and better that can happen. There's this verse that has quickly become my favorite. And the more and more I read it out of, out of, out of the scriptures, it resonates with me more and differently each time I do. And I wanted to share it with you today because I think it connects a lot of these dots in a really powerful way. And it's this passage in Ephesians. You see, Paul is, is this guy who's traveling around and he's trying to spread the good news about who Jesus is and the difference that he can make. And he's, he's basically meeting with different groups of people. And in his travels, he's not always able to be right with the people and, and have relationship with them. And so when he's out traveling, he'll then write a letter and say, hey, remember these things. These things are important. And so we have this letter that he writes to the church in Ephesus. And this is what he writes here in, in, in verse 14 of chapter 4. As a result, we are no longer to be children, tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming. You know, when I pause and I think about that, I'm reminded of the waves on the ocean. Like there's these forces, there's these things that are tearing us down. There's these things in, in life, the, 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 the craftiness and deceitful scheming. Like there's things that, there's evil, there's, there, there's bad things that, that happen in life. Um, that, you know, there's every wind of doctrine, there's, there's different truths out there. What do I do and how do I do that? And like there's these things that tear, like happen in life that it's, it's like a wave crashing down and like, okay, what do I do with these things? And that's what I, that's what I see and I, when I read this. I'm like, there's these things that in life that can toss us to and fro and like can like tear away and, and beat against the castles that we are trying to build in the sand. But, in verse 15, he says this, but speaking the truth in love, we are to grow it up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ, from who the whole body being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. He speaks of growing up, right? There's that language. And, and one of the things that I've noticed in this and, and, and reading it and understanding it is like, he's actually using like several different metaphors and illustrations at the same time. Like earlier on, he's using like the illustrations of wind, you know, and rain and like the, the beating up. He's also using imagery of, of body, like head and, 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 and the body. He's also, some of these words, the roots of them, speak of building, like construction. There's like several different types of metaphors and illustrations that he's using all within like a short, small little passage. And I wonder why. I think because the thing that he's trying to explain and, care, and carry out and get us to understand is more complex and better and, and it, it can't be summed up in just one phrase. It can't be just summed up in one little illustration. So he's got to use several different things to try to get across this thing that matters and will help us with the challenges in life. The things that beat up against our castle, that, that, that threaten to tear it down, that threaten our lives to actually be what we want it to be, is so complex but yet so powerful that if we were to understand it, it would help us, but we have to understand that it's multifaceted and it's something that is interconnected. It's something not so simple on the surface. And so when we read this, I see all these illustrations, all these metaphors that he's trying to use. And he's using this language of head, of Christ. If, if there's something about Christ, the gospel message of who God is, that if we make that the head, the, the first, the only thing, and then from that, connected to that faith, that there is this being held together. There's this being able to endure, to be built up, to grow. And these words speak of edifying, of building up for the common benefit of each other. It's this, it's this idea, actually, like interdependent symbiotic relationship. Interdependent, like you're interdependent, you're dependent on each other, it's linked together, but it's a symbiotic relationship. It's for the benefit of each other. That when you do something, it benefits the other, and when they do what you bet you get a benefit. It's this building up of and into something better and bigger because you're connected to something else. The rainforests are beautiful, but if you take one tree out of that rainforest by itself, it will die. It's because of its interconnected 
symbiotic relationship with everything else that's going on in the rainforest, that all of the rainforest is able to be the beauty that we get to see on some of those pictures, or if you have the chance to even go visit it. And there's so many little illustrations I think you, we see in life, and one of them, I believe, is the church. He's speaking of our relationships with each other, that each one of us are made up of the body, like we each have a different part to play. And there's something about our relationships together that represents this idea of being knit together, of building each other up. Each individual part does what they're supposed to do in connection with each other, that it causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself. There's something about circling up with other people, having other people involved in our lives, that we actually end up enjoying love and connection in a powerful way. See, we have this other value that, that's connected to the other one that I just shared. And it's this idea that we grow more in circles than we do in rows. You see, changing what you think, feel, or do involves changing who you put around you. Who do you have as a part of your circle? Because that connection that you have with each other has the power to change and benefit your life. But who's a part of it? And what does that circle look like? How, if you were to describe it, what, what are the ways in which that circle is, the, the characteristics of that circle? What does it look like? Well, I wanted to share a few ways in which that might, you might be able to benefit or um, live out in your own life. I've got these four things that I want to walk through uh, that I believe Scripture guides us, uh, that, that Paul and others have written down to kind of guide us of like what this actually might look like if we're to live in circles, live together. And number one, it's this, that you need people who truly know you. You, you see, you need to be able to be honest like with others around you. You know, there's, this, the, there's the good of you, but there's also the bad and ugly side of you. Like each of us have it. Like, and you need, you need at least somebody other than yourself that knows and understands that, that, those things. You need to be able to be vulnerable and transparent with others around you. To be close enough with somebody else that they love you, but then they also might be a little annoyed with you. In James, in chapter 5, verse 16, he says this, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. There's something, there's a healing power that exists when we're open and honest with others around us. That we can confess to God, that's one thing. But if we open up and confess with each other, there's something healing that can end up happening out of that. The second one is that you need people who can learn from and impart something to you. It's this idea of helping to teach and share what you know with somebody else. So I wanted to share with you the story of a small group leader that we had in our kids' ministry a while ago. We, um, we regularly talk about in kids and student ministries about placing a consistent leader in the life of a kid. You know, we, we want like a leader not just to show up and like and be there for any kid, but we like we want to create a connection, a relationship, a, a safe place to belong, where the same group of kids meet with the same leader and there's relationships. This idea of you know the depth of your relationship amplifies the truth of the message. And one leader like did that many, many years, like served with the same age grouping of kids every year consistently and, and loved it and had a great time. Well, one year she really connected with a group of girls and, and it went really well. And we had started to kind of tease out and talk about this idea of staying with a group of kids even as they get older. And so she did that. She made the jump and like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay with this group like in the next year. I'm not, I'm not going to stay with the, the same, same age group. I'm actually going to move up to their age group. And, and she did that even into middle school. <laughs> and then in high school, she stayed with them. And like, it was incredible to see the depth of the relationship that ended up happening between those girls and that leader. It was incredible. There's the stories and the memories that they were able to have. And I like, I'm like, wow, that was amazing. Like she got out of her comfort zone, did something very difficult and uncomfortable, but ended up making a huge difference in the lives of those kids. This is that idea of like, I'm gonna take what I have and leverage my influence for, the, for somebody else. I'm gonna teach you, I'm gonna share with you, and I'm gonna do that like, not just like a couple different times, like, but the consistency in which you invest in others' lives. There's another truth that I wanna talk about, is that you need people who you trust to lovingly confront and challenge you. To have somebody close enough that you trust and, and you can be open with and honest about what's going on, but then give them permission to challenge you, to say like, hey, like, if I was to get out of line, like, please let me know. <laughs> and then when they do confront you, 
you receive it maybe in a different way because of the relationship that you have with each other. You're able to apply those truths and be, you know, um, to work them out in our lives because you've given license to somebody else to do that in your own life. Hebrews 10, 24 says that this, this way, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. You know, we, we need that kind of presence in our lives. Like we need somebody else to champion, to coach us along, to say, hey, keep on going. Like that's really great. Or hey, you're a little off right there. Like be careful. And we, but we need to have, in order for that to happen, you need to have people that are close enough and consistently enough meeting with you in order for that kind of thing to happen. Number four, is that you need people who are committed to doing life alongside of you, who will show up when you need them, inconvenience themselves on your behalf, and leverage their resources to help you succeed. John 15 it says this, this is my commandment, love each other in the, way, in the same way that I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for a friend. This is the example that Jesus laid before us. He showed us what it looked like to love and to care to get out of like our own comfort, to inconvenience maybe ourselves for the sake of others. And I'm gonna do that because it matters. Oh, but remember that leader I told you about earlier? So the cool thing was years later, after like the girls had graduated, um, this leader got sick. She ended up on a hospital bed. And um, who showed up in the room but those same few girls. To rally around her, to pray for her, to encourage her. Where do you see that happen but in the church? To be there for each other physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually in all the fullness of what I believe life is meant to be. But if that leader hadn't have invested week after week, year after year in the lives of those girls, would those girls have that kind of model to live by? That kind of example to live by? There is something powerful that can happen if we live out this to the fullest extent that I believe God and Paul when he was writing this intended. In a powerful, powerful way to become who we were meant to be, but we only strive to be, that we wanted to be, but we could never get there alone. But we could only get there because we had others around us. So this is my encouragement or challenge to you today, is to decide, to decide to do something. Kind of circle back to that study that I shared. Like if we, if we take this good like information or knowledge and like go like, okay, that was really good. Like, okay, you shared a couple good points. Like, but if we don't decide to do something about it today, to decide to like, I'm going to make this a priority. I'm going to lean into relationships in a new way. I'm gonna circle up with a few others if we don't decide to do something and then also then figure out how, like what does that look like? How do we do it and when do we do that? Well, I wanna share what that might look like. It's to circle up. It's to, to meet up with somebody. Maybe you're not meeting up with somebody. Maybe life is so full of work and kids that you're not really meeting up with some anybody consistently. Maybe you already are meeting. You already have a group of people, but like maybe it's not so much infused with faith or spirituality. It's maybe it's not infused with other things that are guiding you to be a better you. So maybe it's enhancing what you already have. You take your friendships and your, your get-togethers and maybe just tack on on the end of it a question of like, hey, how can I pray for you? Maybe it's, a, a, and then like write that down and then maybe the next time you meet up, you ask about that thing. Hey, so you asked me to pr like pray for this thing, like how, how's that going? Maybe taking something that you already have built into your life and just enhancing it a little bit. Maybe that's your step that you need to take today. Or maybe you join a group. We have these South Hills groups that are gonna be starting later on at the end of the month. And maybe that's your step. You've never done that before. A, a structured, formal group, like maybe it's about parenting or marriage. Maybe you're a young adult and you'd like to meet with them. Or maybe it's getting together with students on, on Wednesday nights, like uh, the same age and, and a mindset of you and meet on a consistent basis. And so sign up. Or maybe you're willing to like, with some support and guidance, lead one of these things. 
And, and maybe you're, you're willing to, to take that step. You've kind of been a part of some of these things before, like a small group or getting together on a consistent basis with others. And you're like, you know what, I, this matters. And so, yeah, I get it. And I, I want to be a part of maybe providing that for somebody else. You know, we're, we have this group interest meeting that we're going to be meeting with anybody that's interested in leading a group. And we're going to talk through some of the, what, the ins and outs of what that looks like. We're going to be doing it after each of our live services next weekend. If you can't make that, then just comment and any of the connection cards and any of our teams will connect with you and, and guide you through what that looks like. And then we're having signups at the end of August, August 30th, to sign up for any one of those structured groups. And then we're doing a big launch, like all these groups are gonna range, like basically start and meet somewhere in between Labor Day and Thanksgiving. Some of them will be shorter, some of them will be longer. But here's something that I want all of us to do. Because for all of us, I believe that there is, there is a step to take. There is something that we each can do to lean into um, and, and make a difference in our own lives. I want you to text the word CIRCLE to 951-476-2550. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna send you a form, basically a little thing to fill out with some questions, and that's it, if you want it to be. If you would, I, I encourage you to do something because this idea of like making a difference in our lives, like we have to decide to do it and like when and how. And one of your, like one of your steps I would guide you to do is just text this, text this thing and fill out the form. You, you won't get like follow-up stuff other than like one little reminder again if you didn't fill out the survey, but that might be it. But that also would allow you that if you wanted to have somebody follow up with you to get you connected to a group, and maybe it fits into one of the groups that we're already planning on doing, or maybe it doesn't and we would like to talk to you about other groups that we could form. Maybe it's around like, it doesn't also have to be a structured Bible study. It could also be like, hey, we're gonna go and walk around the park like with a bunch of moms on this night or this, after, this morning. And we're, or hey, we're gonna meet at Starbucks and get together and hang out here. Like we would love to partner people up around what works for you in your, your season. And so text this word, fill out the form, and then allow us, if you would, to follow up with you. But I'd l encourage you all to take that step and to text the word circle as one part of your next step into making a difference. See, here's the thing I've learned in my life is that everything that we're desperate to get from others, we were designed to give to others. Yeah, I, I love it when people say I do a good job. I enjoy that, like I think any of us like do, right? Um, but I've learned that like, I am only able to be as good as like the things that in my life right now because of the people that I've had around me before. Like I am who I am because of the other, like others that have poured into me. Like I recognized I needed these things in my life. I needed somebody to hold me accountable. I needed somebody to teach me things that I didn't know. I needed somebody to invest in my life because I couldn't do it myself. I needed those things. And God specifically put in my life others that gave that to me. Like my life is what it is because of David Lewis, a Jody Lewis, my in-laws. Like I am who I am because of them. I am who I am because of David Miller. I am who I am because of Todd Baltzley, of Scott Matthews and Brant Perigo, Lori Kelly. I am who I am because of so many people that invested in my life, sacrificed themselves to invest in me, a young boy that was shy and quiet and wouldn't get up in front and speak in front of anybody, but somehow gave them a mic and said, hey, learn and grow. Hey, take this ministry, grow and do this, and gave me the keys to something that like I didn't know what to do with, but invested in me and cared for me. People like Josh and Angie Canham that poured into me and my son and my wife and we got to know each other, like Adam and, and, and Gretchen, like people that have invested in our, my life. I am only who I am because of the others around me. I got from them something that I'm like, looking back at it, I'm like, God, thank you. Thank you. I am who I am, not because of the things that I've learned, but because of the people God has placed around me. And I am designed to do that for others. We all are designed to do that for others, every single one of us. And I encourage us to really take a step this week, today, to say, you know what? I haven't done this before in the way I'd like. I'm gonna do something about it. I haven't really done this for somebody else. I'm gonna do something about it. I'm gonna invest in others. Let me pray as we close out. God, you are so good and amazing. 
And God, I pray that you would help us to take some of these truths and may it sink into our hearts in a new way. May we take steps and action steps. Maybe we vocalize what it is that we're thinking through and processing out. May we do that with others around us in a new way in this new season, especially in light of COVID when I think we've definitely seen the need for connection, that we all are desperate and need others around us, that our lives are better when we have consistent, healthy connections and relationships with others. Help us to take steps as a local church and individually to do something about that. Thank you, God. We pray these things in your son's name, Jesus. Amen. Thank you guys so much for tuning in with us today. We hope that you learned and laughed today. And we also would love to encourage you guys to share this message with your friends and family. You can do that through Facebook, Vimeo, or YouTube. Again, we invite you to fill out a connect card with us today. And you can do that by texting the word connect to 951-476-2550. And lastly, make sure you're following us on all of our social media accounts so that you can stay up to date on everything happening here at South Hills. We love you guys and we can't wait to see you guys next week for more Church Online.